Well, we want to talk about VoIP now, Voice Over Internet Protocol, the new way to make telephone calls. We've got Matthew Ingram on the uh, show here, live from theglobeandmail.com. Thanks for joining us, Matthew. Thanks for having me, Mike. Wanted to get you on because uh, I know you've uh, tried a, a number of different VoIP services, and I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on the, the whole experience. Uh, obviously, we've been using telephones uh, forever here, and uh, VoIP is really a, a new service for a lot of people. Do you think we're there yet as far as the quality and, and the service? I, I think we're there some of the time. You know, uh, when I've used it, uh, it's been kind of patchy. So, uh, and I've tried several different providers and it doesn't seem to, to matter who you're using. It's, you know, I think it ha has a lot to do with your cable company or your DSL or, and other things that, that are happening with your sort of internet provider because it's, it, it's contingent on your internet access. So I've had sort of issues with, with almost all of them. Sometimes it'll be crystal clear, and then all of a sudden you'll, you'll run into, you know, packet loss, as they call it, and it gets patchy. Um, and, and lots of times I've, it's not as though there's been a lot going on, you know, on my sort of personal network. So then I don't know, is that my cable company, you know, the things are getting clogged on their part of the network. Uh, it's hard to say. Well, it is interesting. I, I've uh, tried out some myself, and I do like the aspect of how connected it is. Uh, like you said, being able to get your uh, your voicemails via email. Uh, I'm just wondering if, like the the mass audience, is ready for this. You talked about some of the, uh, uh, I guess, the the quality issues there. And you know, for a lot of people who don't really understand how this works, it's basically using the internet to transmit your voice and uh, uh, breaking it up into a number of different packets and then reassembling it on the other end. And uh, again, if there's any type of uh, high internet traffic uh, or issues, uh, you do get the, that loss of voice or crackling. Uh, and uh, it's not typically there yet as far as the quality of uh, an actual telephone uh, call. And it's kind of funny because, you know, over the years we've gone with cell phones and, uh, and voice over IP. It's almost like telephone quality just kind of goes going downhill. <laughs> it's true in a way, and, and I guess I was going to compare VoIP to, to cell phones. People seem to have gotten pretty used to, um, you know, cell phone quality. Uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes you can't make a call, sometimes as you're driving, you know, the cell uh, drops your call and you have to call again. People seem to have gotten pretty used to that, and I think in a way it's a little like uh, MP3s. I remember an audio guy telling me way back when, oh, people will never go for MP3s because the quality is a lot lower than, say, a CD. But people are willing to put up with that because they get convenience out of it. You know, they can take them places, they can, they're more mobile, and I think cell phones are the same. People are willing to put up with a certain amount of deterioration in quality because they get other things out of it. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, for a lot of people, especially at home, and, and who do make uh, long-distance calls, obviously the price is... Uh, are, are way cheaper. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering again for business, they, they really have to expect a high quality as far as the, the phone calls go. And I'm just wondering at what point, you know, they'll, they'll finally get there as, as far as that reliability. I think you're probably going to see most businesses and particularly large businesses are going to continue to use traditional providers. They may, it may wind up being VoIP in the sense that it may be carried over the internet. Um, but I think you'll probably see them continue to use sort of big providers, but, but I think even for small businesses, I know uh, a feature I did on, on VoIP, I talked to a guy who ran a small company. Um, he used Vonage because he could have the same phone number, a 416 phone number, no matter where he was. So, and there again, it changes the way you think about your phone. He would take his Vonage box with him on the road, plug it into a high-speed internet connection, and instantly his office would effectively be there in his hotel room or wherever he was. Well, it's going to be interesting, I think, over the next few years here, you know, especially with VoIP and, like you said, being able to take that number no matter where you are. I'm here in Vancouver, and you're right, through Vonage, I can sign up and have a Toronto area code. But even with the whole number portability thing coming into play here, well, you'll be able to take your phone number to any carrier. Uh, you know, it's going to come to a point where you don't know where people are phoning from just by looking at their phone number anymore. That's true, and I think in a lot of ways the number, particularly with portability, your number is probably going to become just a, a place people can get you, just like your email isn't really attached to a particular place. Your phone number will just be the number people reach you at, whether it's 
you know, your cell or your VoIP or your, and it, wherever you are, that number will sort of reach you in, in whatever format, you know, you, you desire to be reached at the time. So I've got to ask you, do you use VoIP at home? I don't right now. Um, I guess because I've, I've been reviewing different VoIP providers, I, I sort of have had them and then not had them. And so I've never actually gotten a VoIP line uh, for myself. But, you know, I have three daughters, two of whom are teenagers, and I've, I've often thought a VoIP line would, would be a perfect sort of second phone line for, for a daughter. Especially with the amount they talk. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much, Matthew. Okay, thanks, Mike. That was Matthew Ingram from theglobeandmail.com talking about VoIP.